What's going on everyone? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to replace the front brake pads and rotors on your uh, 2000 or 2001 all the way up through 07 Ford Escape. Also should be the same steps, maybe slightly different fastener sizes and part numbers, but it will be the same steps for the uh, Mazda Tribute of the same years as they are a shared platform. All right guys, so what's going to be needed for this is obviously pads and rotors or just pads or just rotors, whatever you're doing. Um, Pay attention to this because there's two different size front rotors and it depends on if you have drum brakes in the back or disc brakes in the back. As you can see on this one, we have disc brake all the way around. So that, um, that made it so that we got the 12 inch rotor. I believe the ones with drums in the back have an 11 inch rotor. So pay attention to that and the part numbers before you order. I'll try to, um, Put some product links in the video description between if there's different ones between the uh, Ford Escape and the Mazda Tribute uh, as well as the different size rotors depending on drum and disc. I will also put a couple of these tools like Mil Milwaukee's in the video description if you're interested. So aside from the pads and rotors you're gonna need a hammer, a seven millimeter Allen, a ratchet, um, a decent size flat blade screwdriver and a mid size one would be nice as well. An 18 millimeter socket, a C clamp, or the dedicated tool to push the piston uh, back into the caliper, which I don't have currently. Um, a cheater pipe, and either a ratchet or an impact to get the wheels off. As far as recommended items go, probably a drink to get you through the job. Uh, I recommend half inch and 3 8 drive torque wrench a bungee cord to hold your brake caliper out of the way, a wire brush to clean up your brake caliper, um, some blue Loctite just for some of the fasteners, some Silglide lubricant, um, anti-seize, a pry bar, and a smaller 3 8 impact. Again, these items here are optional. All right, so the first step here, if you do not have a cordless or air impact to break the lug nuts loose, you're gonna wanna crack the lug nuts loose while the vehicle is still on the ground. Uh, lug nut size you should need is the three quarter inch socket or a 19 millimeter, both will work. Also recommend setting the parking brake and chalking the rear wheels. Yes, good wheel chalk. And of course, if the wheel is stuck on, you'll have to give it a swift kick. Take it off, put it out of the way. Now, like I said, we're on the driver's side here and you're gonna mirror this, all these steps for the passenger side, of course. Uh, I jacked up on the front of the lower A-arm and then supported the back side of that with a jack stand just in case. Now being that we're on the driver's side, I'm actually gonna turn the wheel to the left so the caliper turns out towards us a bit. That's gonna allow us to get to the fasteners a little bit better. Just turn the key twice to the run position Turn it. Key back off. All right, now here's where the small little pocket screwdriver comes in. If you have no fingernails or weak nails or whatever, um, there's one, two uh, brake caliper bolts we have to remove and there's plastic covers. This one's actually missing, but um, all you gotta do is get your nail behind it and you can pull it out again. If you're having trouble, little screwdriver. And then now we can access our brake caliper bolts. 1A Auto actually said that these are a T47 Torx. Um, that's wrong. They're actually a seven millimeter Allen. All right, got the seven mil Allen with our ratchet on there. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. It's gonna loosen up both of these. I try to, even if you have power tools, I try to at least crack these loose first just because sometimes they get real rusty here where they thread in and uh, you can snap them if you just put too much instant torque to them with an the impact. Now you'll notice when we get all the way loose, the bolt will kind of get stuck. See, it's, it's not, it's threaded all the way out of the hole, but the slide pin that we're loosening here is kind of stuck in this rubber. So what you can do is get a flathead screwdriver and kind of just pry on the shoulder a bit to pop it out some. And then I guess another optional recommended tool would be a vice grip or pliers. So you can just kind of wiggle it and uh, 
pull it out. It's nothing too hard, it just gets hung up on the rubber. Now the next thing is gonna be to remove this metal retainer clip if you have it. Now these are kind of dangerous. I recommend wearing safety glasses and kind of looking away from it when you do this. I'm sure there's a more technical way to get them off, um, like maybe pull this end first. But what I usually do is stick a pry bar in here like this in the middle or right here and just kind of pry it and bend it until it either gets loose enough to where I can grab it and pull it off or if it goes flinging off, which is why I said wear safety glasses. Don't look at it when you're doing this and definitely don't be around anything that's fragile like glass or another vehicle next to you, which is why I'm doing it out here in the driveway. Let's see what happens here. There we go. Wasn't too dangerous there, but it can be. Also check your new brake pads first before you dispose of these or bend them up too bad. You might have to reuse these. Okay, now we have two options. One, if you wanna kind of fight the caliper, you can just stick a pry bar or big screwdriver right in here and pry it forward and kind of walk it off and hang the caliper off to the side. Or if you're having troubles getting the caliper off, you can kind of stick like a flathead screwdriver in here between the rotor, which is, you can see it's got the venting right there. So steel rotor, and then here's the brake pad meat. And then here's the metal backing plate for the pad. You stick it between the pad and the rotor and you can kind of just twist and like pry a little bit and that will push the piston of the caliper in a little bit. I kind of just don't like messing with that. I just do this and work it back and forth. It will eventually free up and then you can pull this off and I'm gonna hang it by a bungee cord so it's not hanging by the brake line. All right, there we go. I put a bungee just over the coil spring and then hooked it into the two holes that this little retainer sits in just to kind of hold it up. We don't want to strain that brake line, especially on an older vehicle like this. As you see, one pad came with uh, the caliper and the other pad stayed. In order to remove this pad, you should be able to just kind of slide it out. Might have to alternate um, top and bottom or get a screwdriver in there to help you out a bit. And then the top one is held in, sorry, not the top one, but the one in the caliper just has these little retainers. You just lift right on out. Next, we're gonna use either an impact or a ratchet with the cheater pipe that we recommended uh, with an 18 mil here to remove this bolt and this bolt to remove the caliper bracket. All right, and now it is time to remove the rotor. If it doesn't just fall off, you'll need the hammer. Now doing this part, pay uh, special attention. As you can see, there's a dust shield here. So you don't wanna hit the rotor around this side because you'll end up smashing the dust shield into the rotor. And that's gonna make a horrendous noise when you get this all back together. So come over on this side where the caliper rests. As you see, there's no shield or anything. We're gonna hit right there. it got cocked a little bit but there we go now I've already done the passenger side so I know this is correct but I would take the new rotor and match it up with this one make sure you know lay them on top of each other make sure the lug holes are the same distance apart the same size make sure the diameter and the thickness I guess the diameter, not the thickness of the rotor are the same. Obviously this rotor is going to be thinner than the new one because it's more worn, but the diameter um, should be the same. And now this is where I recommend the wire brush and anti-seize. So in this channel here and here um, is where the brake pad rides. And of course here where you can see the wear marks, as you can see here and here, as well as two spots down here where the brake pads uh, ride, it's actually a little notched where they contact. You can see it's a little grooved. If that gets bad enough, you should replace this bracket. You can typically get a uh, loaded caliper, which is this bracket with new slide pins, with the caliper, with pads in it already, usually at the auto parts store um, for cheaper than buying it all separately. So um, if you wanna go that route right off the bat, you can. Obviously, if your caliper is okay, um, 
you don't need to do that. You can get just the bracket. But I think we're gonna give these one more round before we worry about it. This isn't super important unless you have really, really bad rust scaling buildup or something here. Um, and you're having issues with getting your pads slid in, but I like to just clean it up just so the pads have a nice smooth surface to slide on and you don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna scrub in here and here and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, there it is, cleaned up a little bit. Not perfect, as you can see. I didn't bring it to a bench grinder or nothing. Just used this stainless steel brush by hand and then wiped it with a paper towel to get all the old uh, rust and metal debris out of there. Um, now I'm ready to put some anises on, which again, this is optional. You don't have to do it. Uh, and the thing with anises is that on moving parts, I recommend using the copper anises because the silver anises actually has metal in it that's just as hard as this steel. So if you use a lot of anises and you put it on a surface that moves on another surface, it might wear it prematurely. Not worried about that though. Like I said, I'm gonna go one more round with these. So if this does do any sort of damage, I'll just get new brackets next time. But I would recommend using the copper if you have it. I'm gonna use the silver because that's all I have right now. And there we go. I've done these little small square rectangle sections as well as, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but you can see basically anywhere the pad is gonna ride. If you're questioning it, you can set a new pad in there and you can see where it's, or just look at the old rust marks and you can see where to put it. But as long as it's a nice even coat, it doesn't need to be like super thick or anything. And we're actually gonna do the same thing over here on the hub. I'm gonna take the brush and just do this inner lip here that has this little orange rust buildup going on. Um, we're gonna hit from there up to this dark line right here. So this whole section right here, all the way around, that's gonna help get the rotor off next time we do a brake job. Et voila, there we go. Nice little coating. Now, if you've never used anises before and you're gonna use it, I'm just gonna tell you right now, you get one tiny little speck on you and it gets on everything. You touch your wrench, your clothes, whatever, it's gonna end up everywhere. So maybe wear gloves, have some rags handy. As you can see, my whole hand is covered even using that brush, so. Now the next step is gonna be to address the rotors if you're doing those. As you can see, there's all sorts of junk debris stuck to the rotor and that's because there's like a sh thin uh, layer of shipping oil or grease on the rotors. So I recommend some carb clean or brake clean or something like that with some rags to wipe off this face and this face where the pads are gonna grab. Otherwise, your pads are not gonna perform like they should. Um, if you don't have any brake clean, at least take like a paper towel and wipe them down nice and uh, good to make sure you get as much oil off as possible. As you can see by the rigs, <laughs> we're, we're clean now. So we can take the rotor and put it on. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the brake caliper bracket. As you can see the round marks here, that means that uh, it was made it up to this side of the hub. Here's the ears. So it's gonna go between the rotor and the hub here. And as you see, you see how the rotor's sitting tilted? It's all cocked because nothing's really holding it in place. If you're having troubles like that, you can take one of the lug nuts and just thread it on by hand for now to kind of hold it straight for you. But that's what you're looking for. Goes over the rotor in place and we're gonna reinstall those two 18 millimeter bolts we removed. All right, here's where another recommended thing comes in. I'm gonna put a little couple drops of blue Loctite on the threads of these 18 millimeter bolts. Um, don't use red, that's high strength Loctite and you'll be kicking yourself next time you have to take these out. But I like a little bit of blue medium strength just for peace of mind um, with steering and suspension and brakes, I would rather have stuff a little snug than falling apart on me. Um, obviously that could be a safety issue. So we're gonna start both these bolts by hand. And then once both of them are started, we can go ahead and torque them down. Um, I think the spec is like 90 foot pounds, but anywhere between 80 and 100, you should be good. I'm actually gonna do 100 because that's what I did on the other side and I had zero problems. There we are, both of them started. Gonna cinch them down with the impact before torquing them down. Now it's also worth noting that the last person that did this, they actually had anises on those bolts, on the threads of the bolts. I don't personally recommend NICs on threads of anything. 
I know a lot of people claim that it gets you more of a true torque, which that might be the case. But I also would argue that that would help loosen up as well because it's so well lubricated. I, you know, like if you got metal like this, that's in good shape. I don't use anything. If it's a little rusty, give it like a little drop of oil or a little bit of WD-40 or something. Um, it's just my preference. There we go, 100 foot-pounds. Now we're actually gonna pop the hood. And now I'm gonna locate the brake fluid reservoir and remove the cap because the next step involves pushing the piston of the caliper back in. And when you do that, it's gonna push some fluid back from the lines in the caliper back up to your reservoir. So you don't want it to overflow or anything. This is a good reason why, um, you know, you wanna keep your brake fluid at a decent level, but if it's like right here, don't top it off that tiny bit to the max mark if you've got old brake pads. Because when you go to change the pads, you push the pistons back in, fluid level rises back up. So it's natural for this to fluctuate high and low between pad changes. So now I've removed the bungee cord from the caliper, and now's a good time to inspect your caliper. If the boot around the piston is torn, or if there's any sort of fluid leaking out, that's an indication that your brake fluid is leaking out of the caliper, and you should replace your caliper. Um, mine's a little dark, like there's a tiny bit of moisture, but I'm not Really, see, really seeing anything too damning. So I'm gonna put this back together and just keep an eye on it. And I got a little carried away earlier uh, where I showed removing the inner pad. You should actually leave it for the time being because if you don't have the proper tool for this, what you do is you use a C-clamp like this where you get a nice flat spot on the back of the caliper. You leave the old pad in so you don't damage your new one. And you're gonna tighten this down. As you'll see, this boot will go back in or the piston itself We'll slowly go back in. And you need to go all the way. You'll feel it bottom out. Right about there is it for me. Can't really turn it anymore. And then of course you just loosen the clamp, remove it and pop the old brake pad out and the new one in. Also want to mention that in addition to if there's any sort of leaking going on here, if your piston is uh, seized and you can't push it in, you'll also need to replace your caliper. Um, that's a good indication on if you had one brake pad that had a lot of life left and one that doesn't. Um, you either have a seized piston here or your slide pins were seized. So um, if you can't push yours in about that far like mine, because this is bottomed out, if yours is still hanging out here, you can't push it, you need a new one. Again, you can see the curvature of the caliper kind of goes like this. So the pad is gonna go in like that. Here's the three clips. If you're having a hard time, you can kind of get the one bottom one started and then um, pinch these in together while you're pushing on the pad to get it in. There we go. Now remember the inner pad clips onto the uh, brake caliper piston. So the outer pad is gonna go on first Obviously make sure that the pad material is facing the rotor. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people put pads on backwards where the metal was hitting the metal. Um, so make sure it goes like this with the pad material facing it. Just gonna kinda slide it in like that. If you gotta give it a little tap, as you can see, it's not seated there. So I'm gonna give it just a little persuasion. Got hung up a little bit, but there you can see exactly where we did the anti-seize and where these pads are gonna be sliding. Now we'll slip the caliper back on. Make sure that your brake line is not kinked. Some people will twist it too many times and then try and put it on and they'll put the caliper on the right way but the brake line will be kinked. So you can see mine is not kinked. And your air bleeder should always be um, on the top side of the caliper. So if this was down here, uh, this, this would be on uh, backwards, upside down. Just start by getting this pad again make sure that this pad is on the inside of the rotor and then you can see the ears for the pads going into place there and then just slip the caliper over the other pad now here's where another variance is um, these pins are actually pretty thick um, I believe the torque spec on these is like 33 foot-pounds 
I did 35 on the other side and I added blue Loctite just to be safe again and I didn't have any problems. If yours are smaller than this, and I know it's hard to judge, I would say this is probably like a 3 8 bolt, basically. I know it looks smaller on camera, but look at it in comparison to my finger. It's It's got decent size to it. Um, so if you have the smaller one, which I assume those ones are if you have the smaller rotors with drum brakes in the rear, the torque on those is actually 26 foot-pounds. So I would go like 25 to 30 with those. Uh, and about 30 to 35 with the bigger ones. And again, I am gonna put some blue Loctite on the threads. It's optional if you wanna use some of this stuff. I just get this Silglide from Napa. It's just a lubricating compound. Um, you could put it on the metal here so that it slides inside the rubber a little bit better, but these pins look like they're stainless steel, so they shouldn't rust or anything anyways. Um, I'm not really worried about it, so I'm not gonna use that in this instance, but you could. It can be a little tricky getting these pins back in because it kind of catches on the rubber. It's a tight seal. So you actually have to push uh, quite hard and kind of like make sure you're in the center of the rubber and wiggle it around. Um, you might benefit from giving it like a couple taps with a hammer, but I was able to push them in by hand. I'll need my other hand probably to support it but I just wanted to give you a heads up that they are a little bit of a pain to get back into the rubber. I just got it started into the rubber. Now I can go ahead, push it in more, and we can push our caliper forward and back as we need to to get the uh, slider bolt here lined back up with its hole. And then again, we're gonna use the seven millimeter. I'm just gonna kind of start it with this and then I'll torque them down. Like I said, I got the bigger ones, so 30 to 35 foot pounds, littler ones, 25 to 30 foot pounds. Torque wrench set to 35. I always give it a couple clicks just to make sure, because sometimes you'll torque something down and then the bolt will stretch a tiny bit or re release a little bit of its energy and you'll get a little more out of it the next click. All right, and now if you had your little plastic caps, we can reinstall those. Since I only have the one on this side and we live in Minnesota, I'm gonna just push it back in here. I'm gonna put it on the bottom one to keep as much of the road salt away from it as possible. At least this one's a little higher, but yeah, they just push back into the rubber like that. And now you can see how full our brake fluid is. It almost ran out. So that is why you take the cap off so it doesn't kind of pressurize and blow up all over the place. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the little retainer clip for the pads and the caliper. Uh, my kit came with new ones. All right, so to get these on, they're actually kind of a pain. The easiest way I found is to get the bottom part on the front side of this face here, and then push this piece into the first hole. And then now you can kind of get it to that position uh, where it rests in there, but you still need to get this piece way back there. And as you can see, when you try to do that, it pulls this out. So I actually use two screwdrivers, use a bigger one to kind of hold it like that. And then I'll take a littler one and put it right here and kind of pry it into its hole with the one while prying out with the other. Too good for your home and let's give it a little tap in the middle here and if everything's all right and you didn't bend it all to hell um, should have good contact right here as well as on the bottom and these should be fully seated now at this point if your rotor's all cocked like that still make sure you push it on there nice and flush and we're actually gonna go ahead and turn the key two clicks back to the run position and turn the wheel back straight so we can put our wheel back on and you want to do this too when you're done doing both sides of the brakes before you start it before you go anywhere hit the brakes watch how far this pedal goes down all the way to the floor because we pushed that caliper piston back in 
Now, every time I hit the brakes, a little bit of fluid is gonna force that piston back out a little more, a little more, a little more, until the pads are making contact with the rotor. There, I'm getting a hard pedal now. So you definitely don't wanna just do brakes and then fire it up and throw it and drive because you'll probably smash into something. Just a quick thought here, but if you have greasable outer tie rod ends, sway bar end links, etc., like this vehicle does, now's a good time to hit those with a grease gun now that the tire is out of the way uh, before you put it back on. Now, of course, we wanna make sure our wheel is on nice and straight, make sure it is lifted up. And of course, these center caps are missing so you can see it, but make sure it's centered perfectly like that around the uh, rotor and hub assembly, and then finger tight start these make sure the wheel is centered if you have something goofy going on like this where you can see the stud is closer to that side than that side if you want to try and get it in the middle and uh it's going to wiggle the tire and get these finger tight you want to tighten them evenly um so that it does rotate and straighten out the wheel if it needs to as you tighten it i like to alternate um like every other lug nut so I'll go this one that one then this one then back to that one and that one. And uh, that should be good enough to drop it down and torque it. Always start these first before putting an impact on them. Otherwise, it's a good way to strip out a lug nut or a stud. Now I'm gonna remove the stand and let the jack down. All right, now that the vehicle is back on solid ground, again, before we drive anywhere, we're gonna start it. Make sure your brake fluid reservoir cap is not anywhere where it's gonna rattle and fall down into the engine bay when you do this. And we're gonna hit the brakes a few more times because now that the vehicle's running, we now have vacuum assist. Again, just pump it till you have a nice firm pedal. And then make sure nothing's in front of you or behind you. Go ahead and put it in reverse or drive make sure that you have stopping power um if you got your foot on the brake and it's in drive and it just keeps rolling pop it back into park quick so you don't hit anything and uh, keep pumping the pedal until you have a hard pedal in this case we're good I'm gonna go ahead put the fluid cap back on as you can see the level did go back down a bit which is good just get out on there and counterclockwise close the hood and now that we're back on the ground we can torque the lug nuts i do those in the same fashion as i did uh, just cinching them down they kind of alternate a lug nut then go around again one more time when i'm done um, the torque spec i'm finding for these is 100 foot pounds but they're the same studs and nuts on most of my other vehicles that torque to 120 and I'm pretty sure that aluminum wheels usually torque about 10 to 20 foot pounds higher than a steel wheel. So I'm actually going with 120 on this. If you wanna stick by the book and do 100, that is completely fine. I just like to have them a little bit on the tighter side and I know they can easily take it. As you can see right there, 120, and there was no stretching or anything like that. Again, this is the uh, three quarter inch or 19 millimeter socket. Now the final step is optional, but I recommend it. And that is uh, the burnishing break-in or period for the brakes. Uh, what happens is if all you do is really light, like city driving basically, and it's just light brake applications all day long, what happens is the brake pad will kind of glaze over and it won't grab as good and it's gonna squeak more. Uh, the way to kind of help combat that is find a nice stretcher road where you can get going about 40 or 60 miles an hour and get going that speed and give it a good uh, brake application basically to a stop and repeat that a few times. You don't have to grenade the brakes all the way to the floor and try to lock them up, but you know, a good amount of braking pressure. I would say like half to three quarter braking power and that's kind of supposed to help set the brakes in just a little bit. So um, hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe for more videos like this. Check me out on Facebook at Tony the Truck Guy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.